Greetings Exiles and welcome to my Righteous Fire Autobomber Elementalist build guide. This one is based off MBX's Righteous Fire Elementalist from last leak. I tweaked it so that it's cheaper, does not require mage blood and has better defense. We have over 7000 life and we are running divine flesh with 83% chaos resistance. We are also utilizing golems here since they are easy to maintain and gives us lots of bonuses to defense and damage. So without further ado. Let's get started with this build guide. First and foremost, we are using the spare Herald Effect MTX on Herald of Ash to get these shiny explosions. I just wanted to put this out there since I know most of you are going to ask me about it in the comment section. So there you go. So we are an elementalist, for many reasons. First we have Mastermind of Discord. This one allows us to inflict a huge elemental resistance penalty to enemies affected by our exposures. From here we take Heart of Destruction. This node is a huge bonus to area of effect while mapping and 30% more elemental damage against unique bosses. It should be noted that damage over time skills cannot trigger the elemental damage bonus from this node by themselves. Hence we are going to use a hit based skill to trigger the bonus and apply exposure as well. From here it's golem nodes all the way starting with Leech of the Primordial. This one is 100% increased golem effect and plus one to maximum golems. Also, with it you don't have to worry about resummoning your golems whenever they die, as it automates the process for you. Finally, we have Elemancer. With this node your golems are immune to elemental damage, effectively giving you 100% uptime on their bonuses. In addition of getting another golem and 25% increased golem effect per summoned golem. And that was it for our sanity. Next for our passive tree, we have one that focuses on life, area of effect, area damage, and life regen. We also have some fire nodes and fist to fire conversion as well. Now once you are high level enough consider investing into a large cluster jewel that adds the minimum amount of passives. On it you want some powerful notables like widespread destruction, burning bright and master of fire. Next we branch off to two medium cluster jewels that adds the following notables burning bright and flow of life. And yeah that was basically it for our passive tree. Now let's talk about items. You will be surprised by how simple and cheap some of them are. Let's start with our weapon. We have a scepter with tier 1 burning damage warlord mod and 40% increased effective malevolence aura effect hunter mod. I combined both of them with an awakener's orb and crafted 20% fire damage over time multiplier and called it a day. Next we have a shield with plus 2 to minimum frenzy charges, 30% increased mana reservation efficiency of socketed skills. 3% to maximum chaos resistance and as much life as possible. The best way to craft something like this is to prepare the suffixes first and then use reforge chaos while locking the suffixes to get the maximum chaos resistance prefix. And from there you just craft life and you are basically done. Anyway next we have a marble amulet with plus 1 to fire gems and plus 1 to intelligent gems. From here I added veiled mod and multi mod it into life and plus 1 minimum endurance charges and called it a day. Don't forget to anoint golem's blood on your amulet for that massive defense boost. Our next item is a pair of gloves with tier 1 fire dot multi and 30% increased damage over time. We get both mods by using awakener's orb and after that we just craft 70 life. Next we have a belt with life, increased maximum life and increased life recovery rate. After that we try to get as much chaos resistance on the suffixes as possible since we need these to run divine flesh. Don't forget to enchant your belt with 15% increased area of effect while you have arcane surge as we do maintain 100% uptime on it in this belt. Our next item is a ring with life, resistances and the high dexterity roll. You will need to have that somewhere to satisfy the belt needs, otherwise you will have to invest into dexterity nodes on the passive tree. Our second ring has life, increased area of effect warlord mod, even more resistances and life regen if possible. If you end up with an empty suffix somewhere consider crafting plus 1 to minimum frenzy or endurance charges depending if you need more damage or phase mitigation. Our next item is a pair of boots with tier 1 increased life regen and tier 1 movement speed. From here it's just resistances and crafted life. Try to get either 2% life regen enchant or 10% increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. As for our helm, we got one with concentrated effect, burning damage support and 30% more elemental damage of socket skills. These combination of modifiers are not mandatory since we do not have our righteous fire socketed in our helm as with juggernaut builds. 
Last but not least, we have an exploded chest with plus one level of socketed active gems, life, chaos resistance, which is optional, and life regen, which is also optional. And yeah, that was basically it for our items. Now let's talk about gems that goes inside of them. For our main six link, we have Var Righteous Fire, Awakened Elemental Focus, Awakened Burning Damage Support, Awakened Increased Area of Effect, Efficacy, and Level 4 Empower. Just as with every other build guide I make, you can use a regular version of Awakened Support Gems, but it's highly recommended that you use the Awakened ones whenever you can afford them. Anyway, next we have a 4 link setup that goes in our helm. In it we have Flame Wall, Awakened Elemental Focus, Awakened Control Destruction, and Life Tap Support. Next we have a mandatory 3 link aura setup. This one goes in our shield to benefit from its increased mana reservation efficiency of socketed gems. We have Malevolence, Determination, and Herald of Ash. Our next gem setup contains some standalone gems like Chaos Golem, Stone Golem, Flame Golem, and Wave of Conviction. Last but not least we got a 4 link mobility setup. This one contains Phase Run, Level 1 Arcane Surge, Increased Duration Support, and the Portal Gem. Assign Phase Run to your left mouse button to maintain 100% uptime on it and Arcane Surge while moving. And yeah, that was it for our gems. Now let's talk about jewels. For our Watcher's Eye, we have increased life recovery rate while affected by vitality, and increased damage over time multiplier while affected by malevolence. Aside from that, we have one unnatural instinct jewel that goes in this specific socket in particular. Last but not least, we have one glorious vanity timeless jewel which mentions Xibiqua specifically. Place it in this specific socket to transform mind over matter keystone into divine flesh. Divine flesh causes half of all elemental damage you take to be taken as chaos damage instead. This is good only if your chaos resistance is higher than your maximum elemental resistance is. The keystone itself gives you plus 5 to maximum chaos resistance, and we get 3 more from our shield. Please make sure to ignore this setup if you did not manage to rack up enough chaos resistance. Any remaining jewel socket you have left should be filled with a normal rare jewel like this one. Having life is mandatory. Aside from it, you need fire damage, burning damage, and area damage. For bandit's quest, we decided not to help any of them. We are really starving on passive points. For Pantheons, we got the Soul of the Brine King for the Majors, and the Soul of Rarely Cash for the Miners. And that was basically it for our Righteous Fire Auto Member build for 3.17. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like, and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. My name is Phoenix, and I will see you all in the next video.